Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat. Welcome to Wood Chat for October 9th, 2013. I'm Matt Gravel from Uppercut Woodworks. You can see that, right? Oh, where's my hand there? Because they fixed their bug. Uh, I'm Matt Gravel from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com uh, or on Twitter at Uppercut Wood. Uh, we do this every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. And if you're watching the video but you want to jump into the chat, head over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room. Log in with your Twitter handle and search for the uh, – and, and you're in. If you're going to use a different Twitter client, just make sure you follow the hashtag woodchat. With me tonight, as always, is Chris Wong from Flair Woodworks. Hey, Chris. You're insane. Hello, Matt. I am feeling a little bit insane, yeah, a little bit overwhelmed by um, my current project. Um, Chris Wong here coming to you from Port Moody, B.C. Um, find me in the shop at uh, flairwoodworks.com, and I've got a wonderful blog there that's updated quite regularly with all my news and project updates and philosophical whatever ramblings I want to put down there. Uh, our third host tonight is uh, Scott Meek. You, you all know Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, I'm uh, Scott Meek, scottmeekwoodworks.com, and S. Meek Woodworks on the Twitters. And uh, Tom Iavino, yes, I am the third host of WoodChat, so let's get that right in Twitter, buddy. Um, yeah, yeah, Tom. <laughs> no, I'm Uh oh, did Scott? Did Scott just? Did Tom Mayavino just nuke Scott? I'm Perhaps. Still, the video oh. is totally frozen. Really? Can yeah. you hear me? Oh, we can hear you, but you. you oh, there. Oh, you're looking awesome. good. Um. Well, well, Scott's. Oh no, you're starting to come back. So, Chris, where do we want to start tonight? Do we want to start with? I um, think. And I think we should start with. Um, this idea of us doing special shows. Sure. So, Matt, before we went on air, Matt did some quick calculations and, just, and figured out that it, as of November 2nd, is that right? Yep, in, on November 2nd. It will be our second anniversary of rebooting WoodChat. And you know what? <clears throat> yeah, November 1st is my five-year anniversary at Flair Woodworks. Really? Really. So... <laughs> so, um, la last week we were talking to uh, Vic Hubbard about WoodChat, and he was watching last week's show, which we did with Shannon Rogers, where we were demoing different events for the Hand Tool Olympics. And he said it would be great if we had more demos like that live, where you can ask us questions about how we're doing these certain techniques. And our idea was to schedule uh, one specific topic per show, and we can talk about that, and the three of us and perhaps others as well can join in and demonstrate how we would take on those tasks, one example being sharpening. So I could demonstrate my sharpening techniques, and you can uh, watch and ask questions, and then we can watch, see how Scott sharpens and see how Matt sharpens, and you'll get hopefully three different ways of sharpening, three different ways of doing the same technique, and we can evaluate some of the pros and cons between the techniques. My way is really easy. I have a concrete floor. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. I just bend over and just drag the blade across the concrete floor, and perfect. Can't beat it. And that's how you do it for all the planes <laughs> you all the Everything planes I you ship out. Yep, yeah. yep. <laughs> I just I have, a, I have a glossy, smooth part of the floor, and I've got a rough part of the floor. i got a... <laughs> And you do the final. You do the final polishing on your beard. Yes. <laughs> Put a honing. That's why. Out. That's why the uh, the length of it keeps changing. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll go the wrong direction. Right. <laughs> your, your wife loves the smell of honing compound. <laughs> <laughs> this um, shirt any... didn't used to be green. It's all from the honing compound that just drips off from the beard. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an absurd conversation. You said you mentioned we we're gonna want to, gonna go insane, so yeah, I'm just trying to fulfill it, sir. Maybe you're. Um, so anyhow, we are looking for suggestions of topics that you want us to cover. Could be anything from sharpening to cross-cutting a board to cutting tapers to 
doing a sketch in a sketchbook or any anything you want us to cover, and the three of us will show you our ways, and we'll try and bring in some different people, some to who can maybe lend more expertise or just a different perspective. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we can even um, take people through making small projects. Ooh. Like make like yeah. a marking, like you know a really quick demo on how to make a marking gauge. Sure, sounds good to me. So, so next week Matt's going to demonstrate how to make a marking gauge. Oh, I oh next week. <laughs> next week, yeah. I'm getting my back waxed. I I soon though. I'll do that soon. Um, so okay. Chris, here's what I'll do. I'll put up a poll. Um, let's get some suggestions today in the chat room. Yes. Um, and then I'll put up a poll um, like I did for the original set of WoodChat topics, and I'll, okay. I'll pre-populate it with the suggestions we get tonight, and um, and it'll have a write-in section as well. Cool. Okay. Cool. So we need your suggestions. We need your suggestions. And we'll just cover the stuff live, right? Yeah, that's it. Cool. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. I had fun last week cutting dovetails in, in the middle of which that was, mm -hmm. even though I completely lost on the, the pine, the whole point of it. <laughs> right, yeah. Scott was being all neat and tidy with his dovetails. Perfectionist, look like myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Matt, where are we, where are we going from here? We've got well, uh, that out of the way. Um, I think we should also get some ideas for what should we do for the two-year anniversary show. Buy everybody uh, a beer. Or have everybody buy us. Beer's good. Maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah, everybody you, buys me a beer. Sounds good. Yep. yep. Everyone buys the hosts a beer. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll donate. We'll, 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 we'll get a Kickstarter. We're looking for fifteen dollars raised. Yeah. <laughs> beer Kickstarter. That sounds like a good one. We should be able to raise that in all fifteen to thirty days. We should be good. Yeah, hopefully. Dollar a day. Dollar a day. Dollar a day. Mm-hmm. For one dollar yes. a day, you can support a wood chat beer fest. Yeah. One other one other thing I wanted to talk about for um wood chat guests for our special shows. I'll put this in the in the Twitter feed, but there's a couple uh, woodworkers on YouTube that I, I when they have a new video I get really excited. Um, that people may not have heard about or maybe they've heard about. One is Doucette and Wolf and I'd really like to get them on the show so I'll put their link to their YouTube channel in the Twitter feed. Um, the other one is a guy who goes by I think it's Quetico, Q-U-E-T-I-C-O, Chris. Um, he doesn't use any power tools, um, and he builds a lot of stuff from logs and, and stuff like that. Um, I think he's pretty. I think he's pretty cool. But he built a foot-powered lathe with a big flywheel, um, and so those are people that I would like to see on Wood Chat. But what I want to know is, who do you who do you want to see on Wood Chat? So send us those as well, and then we'll reach out to those people and try and get them on WoodChat. We've had Mark Spagnolo, and we've had Steve Ramsey and some other guests, but who are the other who are the other people you'd like to see on WoodChat? And we will try and get them. So. Sounds good, yes. I think I have, we have a new slogan for our second anniversary. How does this sound? WoodChat. Setting the bar low for two years. <laughs> 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 How about taking the easy way out? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> winging it. Two years of winging it. <laughs> yes. Yes, we're good at that. But you have to be good to be able to wing it well. Yeah. <laughs> what? Matt's talking about YouTube people he likes? Why is that crazy? Why is that crazy? Uh, that was a reaction chat. to... Wood chat. Don't expect wood talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that what was a reaction to Adam's comment of a one-minute delay on the live stream? Oh, gotcha. Okay. And I was trying to update, see if he's still with us. So, um, to branch off you, the the whole wing it theme, um, <laughs> why don't we jump into my insanity here? Sure. Um, 
if you if you've been like Matt and haven't been following my project, shame on you. Actually, Chris, um, I have been following it. I didn't know it was called Insanity. Oh, okay. I saw okay. the thing where you posted uh, the, the when, when you did the bent thing and you said it works. Right. Yeah, my potato chip. Yeah. So it, it started with these doors, which I built, I guess, a um, a week, two weeks ago. It's a um, <coughs> sorry, um, a book matched slab of ash crotch here. And it's got this really dark, um, dark shade of wood, and that part's, I've heard it called olive ash because it's similar in color to olive, and then the lighter wood, so it's got a really strong contrast and lots of figure as well. So I framed it in these, uh, in the frames, and it's a broken frame. It only extends up to this point here, and then it's open, so you get a perfect book match, and it goes right to the edge of the doors. So I. Of uh, masking about, tape is, is awesome. Yeah, that was suggested oh, yeah, to me I love by that aspect Peter of the design. Franks. So, curved edges I was here, which a joke, is... Sorry. <laughs> Stupid joke. Uh, okay, okay, sure. Scott, Scott is right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... A, okay. Um, so, curved doors, um, which gave me some challenges for hinging, which I haven't gotten to yet, but I've got... Uh, plans to get a parallelogram hinge mechanism, so the doors swing forward and then out to the side. Um, I'll get into that more as I get clo close to that stage. But um, where did I go there? From there, I, I I made this top, and this is it in the clamps. You guys can see this, okay? Mm-hmm. So this is three layers of one eighth inch Baltic birch. In mm -hmm. the clamps. In a clamp and in a form. Yeah. Did I get a picture? This is this is the top out of the clamps here. So mm -hmm. it's convex on one side and concave on the other edge. So, and it kind of distorts just this weird twist thing in the middle. Um, that's the top, and I'm working on forms right now to do the sides of the cabinet. So this has been kind of like a one day building a form and then do a glue up and then wait for a couple of days. It's been a slow and um, mentally challenging project trying to get everything oriented properly. That's most of what I have for that insanity right now. I thought I had more, but it just seems like I had more. And you're doing the same thing with the walls? Or you said you've been working on the forms for the walls? Yes, yeah. Um, it won't be a reversing curve. Um, it's just the the curve gets more pronounced towards the back of the cabinet. Okay. It's going to taper in. It'll be kind of trapezoidal. It'll it'll be wider at the front top than at the back top, but at the bottom it's going to be I think rectangular. I think. Mhm. Mm but this is one of your projects where you're you're basically starting with the doors and building the cabinet. You don't have a sketch up of what your end result, what you want the end result to be. That's right. Yes. Um, you were. It looks like yeah, just took, it looks like you took the shape of the olive ash that inspired the door shape, and then the cabinet is being inspired by the door shape. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good way of describing it. I started with the doors, and then I'm kind of building the cabinet around the doors. Mm -hmm. And I haven't decided yet whether it will be on a base of its own or whether it will be uh, mounted on the wall. Or I don't know if the back's going to be flat or even close to flat. Um, I also haven't decided how I'm going to attach the sides of the cabinet to the top and bottom. I'm, I'm still considering dovetails. Yeah, I think dovetails will look cool. And I think a base, I think a very lightweight uh, base. Frame? Fra yeah, um, just a very simple, lightweight base that holds it up nice and high. Mm -hmm. It look pretty cool. Um, I did some test joinery, um, I think, two years ago, three years ago, and they were quadruple tenons is what I had. Um, I'll, I'll try and find a picture, but this is one idea I have for the frame. This is like a, a perfect square cube. Mm -hmm. For the base, 
this wild cabin. This is, I think. Uh. <clears throat> and, you know, since I've been building this cabinet, I, I don't build cabinets normally. Um, I think I built one cabinet before. Um, one cabinet, one, maybe two cabinets before my entire life, I think. So, um, ever since I've been working on this one, I've been thinking about more cabinets and drawing up different cabinet designs. And one of the things I created uh, last week was what I'm calling a really pared down cabinet. It's pared down all the way. I'm going to find you a picture right now here. If I, here it is. And so I don't even know if it qualifies as a cabinet, but to me, I'm going to call it a cabinet. And so it's a single line for the frame. This happens to be a wall-mounted cabinet. It would be attached to the wall. So you have just a frame that wraps around as the outside of the cabinet and um, just a, an arm to hold the item, whichever, whatever it would be. And this is actually upside down, so it could hold a pen or a marble or something in that cradle. You say it's upside down? It is upside down, yeah. Okay. Here, I can do this, I think. What's with the uh, happy birthday? Um, Where's the birthday? I gave it away as a birthday present. There you go, okay. right side up. Gotcha. So right. I've also done a floor standing one of these two. I don't have a picture of it, but um, it's a half scale. It ends up being about 20 inches, 24 inches tall. And it's got a just a, a square base and then this on top. A little bit different shape. And I think I'll scale it up. Um, so this is a, this a cabinet as a piece of art. This is not a... Uh, uh, it's mildly functional. You're not gonna, yeah, uh, you're not going to put your canned goods in here. It's, right, it's yeah. for displaying a single item. Interesting. So I've been having fun with that. And I promised a picture of those quadruple tendons too. Um, exposed joinery. The, the way you did that last piece is pretty similar mm -hmm. to the legs on the dresser, that dresser I made. Okay. Do you have a picture of that? I do. I'm getting it. This is one of the examples of a quadruple tenon, which I was thinking of, I, I am thinking of using for uh, the base of the cabinet. And I did a few different variations on these multi-tenons. There we go, I got them. Okay, can you see? I can I see your screen. I don't. So here's this. I don't. These are, these are the, this, okay. this right here is the three legs for this dresser. So basically, here's okay. the, here's the carcass for the dresser. Okay. Here's the legs. Here's the carcass yep. without the legs. And there's the Bloody Mary I drank after I was done. And here's the <laughs> carcass. Here's the carcass uh, the with the legs okay. on. Um, I like so the you, asymmetric. The asymmetric drawers. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the one that this is the thing one of the first things I built when I started Uppercut and George Walker commented on it and I was like what? That's crazy! But I was pretty happy about it. So. Yeah, I'm good. I just I, I wish I had made the legs. Come all the way out to the front and all the way out to the back. That's my only thing. Oh yeah. They just ended up being too short. I wish they'd come all the way out. Hmm. Hmm. So. Hey, Adam Weil just mentioned Tom Fidgen, for which I, I think that's a fantastic idea. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Writing it down. So okay. So Chris, the uh, insanity cabinet. Um, yeah. Do not take this. Don't take this wrong. But every time I see the cabinet and I see that you're the like, curved top and thinking of the curved walls, it looks like it's right out of Dr. Seuss. Yeah, yeah I've, I've in, heard, a, in yeah, a good I've, way. I've heard Dr. Seuss. I've heard Disney. 
And I, yeah. there's one other name that I was mentioned that's akin to that. Yeah. I can kind of see it. Um, people think that Judson Beaumont's getting to me, which could be as well. If you watch uh, Cat in the Hat, the one with Alec Baldwin, it's that kind of furniture, very Whoville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the only the only difference is that yours is wood and theirs is all painted resin and <laughs> injected molded plastic, so it's actually harder <laughs> to do what you're doing. I was thinking of dyeing the whole cabinet blue. Little well, side note: if you watch Cat in the Hat, I'm sorry. Yeah. No one should be afflicted yeah. to that. We have, I have, I have kids, so <laughs> I love electronic babysitters. <laughs> so where are we off to next, guys? Well, why don't we, um, why don't we talk about Scott's new offering? Okay. Yeah, this will this will get officially announced and shown off at uh, WIA. But uh, you gonna beat us over the head with it? Yeah. Drive it into um, our heads. Create more insanity that way. Yeah. Um, now this is my the new version of my mallet, Ooh, and pretty. this is the uh, Tiger Maple resin infused head, and an ash handle uh, dyed a, a dark brown, and uh, these will be available at. Uh, I have a couple of them available at WIA, but then they'll be available on the website after that as well. So I just wanted to. To show it off to wood chat first before anybody else. And, yeah. That's specific. That's specifically for plane, for adjusting planes. Yeah, um, it it works good for you know, like counting in some uh, um, holes or dominoes or something into into a piece, but um, they're definitely not made to be a full size man. By any stretch, yeah, I wouldn't do any, any. Uh, I wouldn't be hitting um, chisels or anything with it. But yeah, small stuff. They're they work great for. So. Yeah, uh, I previously had uh, heads on my mallets, and the lignum's just getting too hard to get, and I was using ash as a handle. Uh, I've had a couple of the ash handle break on on my own, and so I decided mm. to switch to. Well, that's that. What did you switch to? Your audio kind of cut out. I also have some unique planes at WIA that will be available. Uh, a couple of German oak planes, and uh, what else are there? I'll have a couple of my resin and fuse block planes available. Cool. A couple of smoothers. So. And since I won't be at WIA, I have shipped uh, Scott. Am I frozen of, again? You're, you, yeah, you have been. Your video is. Your audio is fine. Um, since, since I won't be at WIA, I have sent uh, Scott a set of five time warp planes and some Sorry, other goodies. Sorry, probably triggered. You look kind of freaky there, Scott. Yeah, I'll have those... Uh, Sitting up on them. There you go. Okay. Um, so I'm sending a set of five planes to Scott to take to the show for us for time warp, and he can show them off there. That set of five will be available available for sale at a good price as well. Um, I have to go stop by Scott's booth and have a look at them, though. So, oh. Scott, I didn't hear you when you said you switched away from Ash. Oh. oh yeah, I've had uh, a couple ash handles break. Um, I actually had an ash handle and a and a white oak handle break. I guess is what it was. And so I'm just I'm moving away from that to hickory uh, to create a little hickory. more smoke. Okay, so hickory, gotcha. That was hickory, the hickory, hickory. here. These are some variations of the tenons that I was talking about here. So there's the kind of the diamond shaped pattern, and then the four corners, and then the four corners, and the one in the center. These are done in walnut, which is doesn't show it particularly well, but it it was a fun experiment at the time. The one at the back looks like it's it's only three corners with one in the center because of the, the color of the wood yeah. in that yeah. picture. Yeah, when you first showed it, I yeah. thought it was. 
Yeah. The dark on dark doesn't really work. I think a maple would be better where the end grain will have a greater contrast. That's my plan, anyhow. That's or one idea that I have. You know, the ideas for people that they want on the show are great. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Tom Silva. I never thought of that. That would be cool. Um, but you guys have seen Frank... I don't know how you say his last name. Howarth? Howarth? Oh, yes. His, video, that. his videos are really, really good. Really, really good. He was the one who did the lawn chair, right? Or the... Yeah, the lawn chair. Yeah, and he does he does the chair assembles itself without any hands because he does the the stop motion. Yeah, the stop motion. I was gonna say time lapse, but it's not time lapse. Yeah. Who is this? Frank Ho Howarth, H O W A R T H. I can send you. I'll send you a link to his. Um, okay. His videos are his videos are fantastic. Yeah. Oh, another good one would be. Um, uh, oh crap! He does the videos for uh, uh, Jimmy Duresta. He does those uh, make uh, the, the videos for Make. dot com, okay. and they're all he speeds up different sections. Actually, Chris, when you sped up that section, taking off the clamps reminded me of his, right. of his videos. Okay. Can you send me a link to that? Yeah. That'd be great. Um, actually, I talked to Jimmy about. Having him come to my shop and record one of his videos while making one of my planes. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to do it at some point. So. Scott, when you're at Woodworking America next week, can you talk to the plane makers, see if we can get uh, Ron Hawk and Conrad and uh, Rainey and a bunch of other plane makers on the show? Yeah, I'm going to talk to a couple of them for sure. So um, I think uh, I think they could probably get uh, Ron Brees and uh, possibly Rainey at least. I, I this might be my first time meeting. Uh, Conrad, so I'm excited about that. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely talk to him. That's very, very cool. Speaking That's of uh, plane makers, there is a plane makers dinner on Saturday night at uh, Woodworking America at 7 o'clock. And that is open to more than just plane uh, makers? Yeah, it's it's, a, it's basically a panel of plane makers. And, um, I'm, the, I'm the low man on the totem pole on that one. <laughs> But I'm I'm on the panel because I'm a wood plane guy, so. Um, so only because only because I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I might bet the other way around. Um, yeah. No. Um, yeah, Conrad will be on it. Uh, Rainy, uh, I believe John Akanamaki. In okay. Lynch City. I didn't know um, he was attending. Okay. Maybe I could be wrong on that. Uh, Tom Lee Nielsen, mm -hmm. uh, Robin, uh, yeah, Robin Lee, and a few others, I think. So, I'm excited to be, be part of that group, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just yeah. sit there quietly and learn some things. <laughs> I think you'll get your fair number of questions too. Is that is that how it's how it's being run? You can ask questions to the playmakers. Uh, I believe. I don't know. I know uh, Megan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, Megan is going to be asking questions. She'll be the moderator. But uh, I would imagine they're going to have a question and answer time. So, Which I have to email some pictures to Megan. I almost forgot about that. No, pictures of everybody's planes. So. Yeah. Well, I think I'll have to attend Woodworking America next year. Um, yeah, uh, my, goal is to, my goal is to make it next year, but I'm not, I'm not going to make it this year. Yeah. I think Matt will have to have a North Pacific Northwest uh, in lieu of WIA. Yeah, party. we can all just get together and cry. <laughs> yeah. We're not there. That would be fun. And to get some photoshopping in there, we can can photoshop photoshop ourselves into the crowd. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that would be. I would be fine with that. So Jimmy DeResta, Okay, I found that. I found that link as well. And Joseph Watson says, "Yeah, I get Jimmy DeResta, So. Yeah, I'll I'll have to talk to Jimmy. Okay, you he, know he'll be a fun. Uh, just from talking to him on on Twitter. Okay. So, um. Yeah, like I said, those we are gonna do a, a video together at some point anyway. So. Mm-hmm. It'll be a blast to have him chat. I think. Mm-hmm. So one other question for the people in the in somebody's the watching one of his videos. Maybe that's me. No, that was accidentally started. No, that was me. Okay. 
You, I, I found them on YouTube. I can hear it. <laughs> found them on YouTube and it instantly um, started playing when it was his <laughs> intro reel or whatever. So one question I have for the people in the chat room is: um, Do people want to focus on woodworking, or there, or do they want to start to venture into some wood-based DIY topics like hanging a door or installing crown molding? I, I'm I'm open to it, but I think it's probably the wrong way to go. But um, after the whole Tom Silva idea made me think about it. Do either of you have much experience with either of those things? I do. That's my background. Yeah. Right. Okay. Construction. And I will be hanging a new door here pretty soon, so. Why don't we do a, a wood chat on three different ways to wire your shop? <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could get Diami or on uh, for that. Yeah. Lighting choices or all that stuff. Yeah. Diami's yeah. rule an outlet every two feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Power <laughs> He's not going to regret that decision. No, no. His 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 electrical inspector or his electrical utility might, but he won't. I hate I hate looking for outlets. So yeah. Well, I mean, it reminds me of one of my friends is um we doing the lighting for his shop, and he's getting a grid of LEDs under the ceiling on a one-foot spacing. So he should have a really even cast of light from any angle. No shadows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was true. It's not actually not true. I have really? I have a ridiculous amount of lights in the ceiling of my shop, and you still get shadows. Hmm. Um, and the only way I've found to make them go away is with those articulating arm lamps pointed in the right direction. Yeah. And so, then it just cast a bigger shadow somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, because if I'm closer to one light than the other, then I get a shadow. Yeah, yeah but if they're if they're on a one foot grid, it should be good, right? Just an LED bulb, not a not a. I think it'll um, I think it'll minimize shadows, but I bet he still gets. Yeah. I bet he still gets them. Yeah. I mean, because if if you I mean if you have anything, yeah. It depends, you're you're really if you're if you if you if you. If you have something yeah. blocking the light that's very close to your work. Yeah, you, you can't really eliminate a shadow, can you? Yeah. The only you, you, thing would be to have light come in underneath that. So if this is your bench top, mm. and you have something blocking the light from here, yeah, you, you're, you're still going to get a shadow. So you have to do directional light. He'll, it'll be hard for him to cast shadows, but he'll, he can still get them. So, um, Chris, please don't dye that thing blue. <laughs> yeah. Which are you dying blue? I, I missed the blue dye part. I I, was, I I have considered dyeing the cabinet of Insanity too blue. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> Probably not going to happen, but it's, I don't know, it's radical. I've, I've got a can of blue dye that's sitting, sitting on my shelf just begging to be used, so it's kind of like, like that. Uh, you just gotta got to do something with it. Experiment with it on something else first, please. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll dye the inside of the cabinet blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'll find I'll find a use for it. Scott, you're going to do blue handles? Come on. I was thinking about it. On the mallets? Yeah. I I, yeah. I, the only reason I wanted to was just... Um, no, I can't reach it. Um, I didn't want to be so close to uh, Dave Jeske from Blue Spruce. Yeah, to his mallets, which have the resin infused heads and a black handle. That's why I, I want the brown. And actually, I even experimented. Um, here's my personal one. Mm -hmm. That um, if you can see there, I I hit it with sandpaper after I dyed it, and so it's a little looks kind of a little differently, a little rougher. Um, so I experimented with lightening it up that way, but I wasn't really happy with. I liked the look of it, but I wasn't happy with it for selling. So I mm -hmm. stuck with the, the dark brown, which actually almost looks black because it's so dark. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'll have them both at WIA and, and get people's opinion on them. So. I like the I like the one that you don't like. Yeah. 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 It just look. It look. It's got that uh that worn look to it, which I guess is mm -hmm. nice. But yeah. So tell tell me about the resin infused heads. What what's the process? How are you doing that? Are you buying it that way, or are you doing it yourself? Uh, no, I've got a 
a friend in town who's a turner that uh, does the infusing on some of his turning projects. And so I just take the pieces over to him and, and I take it while it's still a square block and then he infuses it. Um, I also do it on my on some of my uh, block planes. Mm -hmm. And the resin basically just replaces the air. You put it into a vacuum, cover it with the resin, suck all the air, air out so it all bubbles up. And um, then when you release the pressure, the resin replaces any places that, was, that there was air in the wood. Mm -hmm. so then you have to then you bake it, and the baking hardens it up. Gotcha. Does it make it impervious to? Does it still move, or is it completely stable? Um, I would imagine it still moves a, or somewhat, but okay. because you're moving, you're removing the air from the wood. It, it moves a lot less, so it's, okay. it's much more stable than regular wood of any sort. And then it's also very, it's very, very tough. So mm -hmm. I'll break the handle before I, before hmm. I beat up the head. And then really? why, do you, why do you infuse the heads before you cut them? Uh, because it's easier. Mm. I could, and I could shape it, you know, rough shape it and then infuse it. But drilling the hole for the handle has to happen after it's infused. Because I would never get it cleaned out. Gotcha. Uh, Except with redrilling it, so so it's easier to, to do it that way. But you don't you don't have to worry about the resin not being not getting deep enough. No, the, I mean, it gets a little less resin in the in the center. But um, my previous experiment with this, uh, the resin didn't take very well at all, and the mallet head still with uh, with over six months of use. Um, even though it was a little softer than it should have been, it still looked great. It was actually l less beat up than the lignum heads were. So, wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you need to apply a finish afterwards, or do you just polish the infused? Yeah, I just I put uh, some shellac on it and then just a little bit of oil. Okay. So it could probably take another coat of oil to really make the grain pop, but I think it'd be too much. So. Mm -hmm. So an, an oil will actually penetrate the wood still? Uh, it does a little bit, at least enough to okay. to shine okay. it up. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking it's just plasticized uh, wood, and it still works really yeah. well. You can plane it um, when you hit it on the on the uh, belt sander, the you know the the uh, spindle sander. It gets very powdery. It's very white. Okay. You know, very white powder. Um, yeah. But you can plane it normally. You can. My fire alarm's going off. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'll take care of that, please. So, Chris, have you heard of the resin infusing before? Yes, I have. Um, it's a Turner thing, right? For for. That's where it started, I believe. Um, popular for um, like pen blanks, for example, mm -hmm. which are heavily figured and would otherwise be unstable and would want to blow up on themselves. So a lot of the burls you can buy from the turning supply stores and they come stabilized. Um, they're, it's, they're more expensive than traditional pen blanks, which might be a dollar, dollar each, and these are instead $6 or $7, I think. Hmm. And you can so, just buy the supplies I, at home? Um, yeah, there's um, what's that product called? Uh, cactus juice is one one that I've heard of, and you can buy the resin. You can buy this kit to make uh, a, basically a vacuum chamber. You put your your wood in there, you put your resin in there, and then you apply the vacuum, and it draws out the air, and it replaces the it replaces it with the resin. Okay. Um, I've never used it before. I've ne I've turned some of the pens before, and they they seem to turn like plastic. They seem more like plastic than wood in in yeah. this this version, and I think that each formation would be a little bit different as well. So I got I, I gotta imagine there's some woods that it just doesn't work very well on because of of the pores. Yeah, um, I'll find I'll find that website, and it does talk about which woods work well, which woods don't work well. Scott can probably tell you too. I have no idea why my smoke detector was going off in the laundry room, but it was. Yeah. No smoke. Um, Good. 
If anyone sees smoke behind me, you know, let me know. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, um, uh, Joseph Watson is, is right. Uh, people use that, that resin to stabilize different mm -hmm. woods like that are really pucky or, or burls or something to turn. Uh, cactus trunks. I guess that's how he got the name uh, Cactus Juice. Yeah. And uh, turntext.com is the website that I'm aware of. Is this the same product that you use, Scott, or is it a different one? Um, I've used the the cactus juice in the past. Uh, the guy I took this, this stuff to uses a used a different brand uh, because I was in a hurry to get it done. Um, that's the same stuff, yeah. Gotcha. It's all an acrylic resin that just that hardens. So. Hmm. Um, you have to bake it. Really? So does he take it? He take it in the house and put it in his wife's oven and. Yep. You take it out of the out of the uh, out of the vacuum. You know, shake it off, let it drip out, and wrap it in tin foil. Stick it in the oven. Really? <laughs> Thicker pieces you have to bake for two to four hours. At you know, like two hundred and fifty. So. I have. To, uh, this is a new. This is a new thing to me. Yep. New, absolute new thing to me. Uh, Bill Griggs has his own pen blank stabilizing setup on his bench, it looks like. He posted a video of that there. Um, nice. I didn't know Bill made pens. No, they did not. I didn't know he was a turner. Um, knife makers seems... use it as well. They, yes. uh, they use it in their knife pens. So. Yeah. That's a really popular use for them. What were you asking about wood choices for what? Um, Matt was asking if all woods are suitable for the resin infusing, and I was guessing not. No. I'm guessing um, not. Yeah. You can't. Uh, well, the cactus juice guy, I talked for quite a while with him about it when I first got it done. Um, the uh, like mesquite will not take it. Anything that doesn't, uh, that isn't real. Well, I mean, I guess mesquite is porous, but the uh, the cells in the mesquite are, are blocked off. It's kind of weird. Okay. Um, oh, gotcha. Maples and and woods like a maple are, are really good. White oak works pretty well. Um, anything that's really really dry and pucky works really well. But but yeah, there's definitely exotics. Obviously, don't work at all. So anything that's pretty oily. Wow, this is a pretty. This is a pretty neat thing to do with it. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here, but um, some resin with some kind of cloth or something mixed in. Ah, oh, that's cactus. Or wrapped that's a, around that's a, the pen blank. That's, that that's a piece of cactus, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he sells the cactus blanks too. Hmm. That's pretty dang cool. I've yeah. seen turners use these things that are kind of like pine cones too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the seed pods. Uh, yeah. yeah, monkey pod. If you ever, I, I, I sliced open a couple monkey pods. They, they look pretty cool on the inside. We saw. Them. Yeah, it would be. Um... Oh, something else I want to show you. Go ahead, Matt. It w we should. We haven't really d talked a lot about turning on here. It would be cool to. Be cool to get somebody on here who was a turner. Uh, I could I could talk to my friend Greg. I, I don't know how much he gets online, but uh, I, can, I can chat with him a little bit. But but if there's any turners, obviously that are watching, that would like to get on and talk about it. By all yeah, means. that would be cool. Yeah, hold on one second. Yeah, um, so. Uh, Bill says that the video I mentioned earlier was his setup, but he does turn pens, so he's a turner. Um, I do a bit of turning. I don't really consider myself a turner. Well, I can turn, but I don't. I don't. I don't have as much fun with it as I do other stuff. So, no, I don't open the guy for that, but I can. I can do a little bit of turning. Have you seen the bank CRS? Bank CRS. Yeah. Yes. This I is. Have. Uh, that's my resin infused oh. tiger maple block plane. So I, I infuse the pieces before nice. I before I cut it up and, and shape it and everything. You can see on the end the two lines there. 
that's where the resin takes a little bit, a little bit more deeply into the edges of the of the, uh, the board. That's where the joint, the seams are. But um, okay, it works great for a block plane because when you're doing chamfers, it means that the right. bottom doesn't get get grooves in it when it's a wood bottom or wood block plane. So. <laughs> When, when That's the, why I started. Uh, when the plane's resin infused, does it slide across the surface easier? Um, I would, I guess so, a little bit. Yeah. Not real, probably not enough to know the difference. It's not, it's not waxy like a teak or a. Uh, gotcha. An exotic is. So. Yeah. How does it glue up? Do you need to use epoxy for that? Um. I think I actually used I used Type Bond Two this time. Okay, just a PBA. I, yeah, um, but Type Bond Two is is uh, rated for less waxy or less oily uh, exotics anyway. Right. It, it works pretty. You know, it's gotten good use for that. Or Type Bond Three, I said. Did I say Type Bond Two at first? Or type, type Bond Three. Type Bond Three is what you use. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll. I use that. I, I I wouldn't use just a regular PVA, but a you know, waterproof that's not made to exactly soak into the wood is probably better. Mm -hmm. so, epoxy would probably be the best option. And you don't do you you don't pin them in or wedge them in? No. The heads and the handles probably not necessary. Uh, I wedge it. Um, yeah, I won't show because it's died, but I do I do. Wedge the the handles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the block ones I don't. On the what? Um, I I do I do glue the the uh, the mallets with epoxy. I do glue the heads to the. Okay. The, the block planes I use type on three. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, I want to show you guys um, what we're offering at Time Warp now. This is what some we released just uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, it's been a long time. This um, custom engraving, and there's a little video here that talks about the process and what we're, what we're offering. So it's basically a, a hand engraving done with a high-speed rotary tool, and these are some of the samples that I had done. I'm just so excited about the product. It's beautiful. It's a it's, it's wow. a world-class service that we're offering here. And I think this is a first um, offering this type of thing to woodworkers. Um, probably the biggest benefit is that we can engrave hardened steel. So um, we're not limited to just cast iron and brass. We can do engraving on the actual plane blade or a chisel blade and all mm -hmm. sorts of different materials and round shapes. So CNCs don't lend themselves well to doing uh, anything that's not very flat. So. Pretty much anything is fair game. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this here. And I can't wait to see what kind of uh, what kind of things That's people awesome. ask for. Yeah. That is pretty, cool. pretty, 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 pretty. My tools are not that pretty, pretty, pretty. I can help you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> Um, so I'll put up a poll tonight. I'll, I'll probably put up two separate polls, one for technique okay. and one for guests. Um, okay. But I do think we need to do a special show for the for November second. Okay. Well, uh, I think the secret ideas we talked about were good ones. Um, we've got Joseph Watson who is agreeing to come onto the show and demo or show what he's turning for Christmas this year. Oh, that so would be cool. We should time that uh, um, maybe end of this month or beginning of next month. I would do it no early, no later than early November. Otherwise, people won't get their Christmas gifts done. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great <laughs> idea, and we'll have to get you on the show for sure. That's when you're that. supposed to start those. <laughs> oh. Maybe I'd actually get some done ones. Why don't we just there. second week of December? How about that? Enough time to go to the store and find out what's <laughs> not in stock, and then. Mm -hmm. So I think we went through all the topics. Um, one last thing is I'm going to be out on uh, next Wednesday. Oh, no. really? No, 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 not next Wednesday. Okay. The 23rd. Okay. 
because I'll be uh, in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, but so I won't be here on the twenty third. So you that's not a good excuse at all. Yeah. Uh, let's actually, what time would it be? It would probably be five or six in the morning. So maybe I will make it, depending on hotel Wi-Fi. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, maybe I always be liable. Maybe maybe I will make it. We'll see. Bring us some pierogies. <laughs> pierogies. So apparently the thing to do over there is to drink a shot of vodka that has a cube of raw pig fat in it. Okay. I hear they like their vodka over there. I'm not, no, eating, I'm not, doing, the, I'm not doing the pig fat. Um, yeah, I've, I've, heard, I've had bacon brandy, which is um, brandy infused with bacon fat, and they pour off the, they scoop off the bacon fat when it separates. Bacon flavor. Interesting. I've had bacon vodka, bacon flavored vodka. It's great in Bloody Marys, but I don't want. Oh really? Oh look at what look at what Joseph Watson just posted. You see the, the little bubble, little ornament. Yeah. Yeah. That if we can get cool. Joseph, if you, if you can come on and demo that for us, I think that'd be really cool. And love you to, saw, love to see him make that. Where Joe needs to, Joseph needs to be in the uh, telephone design game challenge. Yes, he does. Yeah. I think that's true. Let's get him signed up. What's the deal, Joseph? Why haven't you not signed up yet, man? Yeah, let's get you signed up, pal. When do you want to do it? When do you want to do it, huh? <laughs> um, I was gonna say about the crazy weird drinking things. Uh, there's a there's a bar in Canada somewhere. Um, and Canada is a small country, so you might know about it, Chris. Um, yeah, there's only about four. <laughs> that the, they have shots with a human toe in the bottom of the shot and it's a mummified human toe yeah. and some weird drunk guy here a couple weeks ago swallowed the human toe is and then, this, hold on, and then it's ran the out of the toe. bar. It's the same it's, toe every time, right? It's the same what? Yeah, same toe. Yeah, they reuse it. You're not supposed to drink it. And so this guy he basically stole. effectively stole their toe because he swallowed it. He stole their toe and they're That's all upset about it and now they're trying to find another toe. That's fucking he, gross. He drank it, swallowed it, and ran out the door. Yeah, straight. That's a, that's a different kind of drunk. Yeah, straight, yeah. straight to the honey bucket. Oh. No thank you. Yeah. Mm. Tried that in America, you get shut down. Yeah. Yeah, you would. Hey, Chris, by the way, your elm table turned out great. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I really like it. Really, really like it. So... Wasn't that like two months ago or something? Yeah, I built it a couple months ago, but I just posted uh, pictures of it last week. Oh, you did? Week. I missed yeah. That. Installed into the client's house, it looks like. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we kind of let Joe slip here. We were haranguing him to sign up, but he hasn't replied. So, um, Chris, I think you just—I think you just sign him up. Just give him a, give him a time. <laughs> Tell him when he's up. Okay. I I want to say November 2nd is the next open slot. I don't have the spreadsheet open in front of me. Um, it, I think it's November sometime, though. But um, November 6th would be the first one in November. 6th, okay. Mm -hmm. We're getting close to getting to the end of the year with this uh, telephone game. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is very cool. It is very cool. So we got to hit up some more people to sign up. I'm going to start hitting the forums and start dragging some people. I won't lie, I've kind of missed it the last couple weeks. And it's been yeah. fun to break away from it a little bit, just to yeah. change it up. Mm -hmm. But uh, it'll be exciting to get back into it. Even though I'm, yeah. I'm bummed I'm going to miss your mom on the design challenge. Yeah. Well, you can stay up a little bit, little stay up for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and catch the first I, bit of I plan on being in bed at 8. Oh, okay. <laughs> Set your clock back a couple hours. I have to be hours. up at 3 in the morning. So. Set your clock back a couple hours. Go to bed at 8 still. <laughs> There you go. That's how it works, right? Yes, sure. So, Scott, you you won't be here next week. Matt, I will you, not be here next week. Matt, you may not be here the week after. Right. And I think I'll be steady right through that. I don't I don't think I have anything coming up that's okay. going to compromise that. Okay. Um. So yeah, we're, we're, we'll we'll be back with the telephone game next week, and of course. Next week, Wednesday, uh, fr that Friday is Woodworking America as well as Saturday and Sunday. So mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of you will be out in Cincinnati and can 
Covington, Kentucky there and having all kinds of fun doing the if Olympics. If you're at WIA, please stop by and say hi at the booth. Yes. Mention that you're a fan of Wood Chat. You'll get an extra 0.5% off your point. How much? 0.5%. Oh, 0.5%. I heard 25. 25. <laughs> um, hey, I am having I am having uh, WIA only pricing though, including orders placed. Cool. So. Uh, hey Scott, there was one topic that I meant to follow up with you on from a while ago, but it's been but I missed a couple shows. You remember how I told you my planer was going berserk? At the end of a cut, it would take a big hunk out. Um, about three weeks ago, I went through all of the maintenance steps on my planer, including changing the oil in the gearbox. Whoa. And, um... I'm going to be the only woodworker in America who's done that. That's ever done that, yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, because it had the oil that came in it from Grizzly. I can tell you that the way they place all the little holes to fill the oil... Isn't that a pain in the butt? Oh, yeah, Mary, the that was flexible, nice. uh, the flexible funnel. Yeah, um, I had to replace in mine when I first got it because the because um, well, what's the company that I got it from? Anyway, they screwed up and I had to replace the the gears and everything, and they made me replace the oil. Yeah, so even finding the right oil was a little. It's bit just transmission oil. Um, yeah, they said get 30 weight blah or something, and, yeah. and then you go and there's two 30 weights and one says there's a there's a little bit difference, but I, it smells I, good I, too, doesn't it? Yeah, um, <laughs> and I I did all the steps you talked about were on that the thing that comes down uh, to make sure that it had enough clearance and all that yeah. stuff seems to be running great now. So I don't know I don't know what it was, but um, there were some maintenance steps I didn't go through. Um, but I think I think the plan is um, my wife is looking for a new house. When we get the new house, one of the requirements is that I get a shop, and I did find a guy that is a mobile tool doctor. Um, oh. So after all my tools get knocked out of alignment in a move, uh, uh -huh. I'll just have the guy come over and say, "Set them up." Hey, all beautiful, baby. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. That's kind of a brilliant, uh, a, a brilliant um, business idea. Yeah. As long as you got enough woodworkers to sustain yeah. it. And yeah. the thing is, is a lot of these planers, even or joiners or whatever, even though they're from different manufacturers, a lot they're kind of. Very this similar, if not the yeah. same. Yeah. Look at every 15-inch planer from every company. The body is made in the same factory in China. Yeah, or I guarantee or, it. Or um, the first thing the Grizzlies guys guys did was they went and bought a Powermatic planer, took it apart, and made all their molds. Mm. With you know, because they are like when I looked at my when I looked at the, my Grizzly joiner and planer, I looked at all the models from all the other manufacturers the weight the length all the stuff is the same the only mm. the only variations I've seen are some people they they do some slight variations in how much money they spend on the handles wheels knobs yep power. that's a difference uh, the gears that they put in it are going to be different yeah the power switches, the bases the, the motor yeah and then yeah. How much time and the cutter and grinding how how the castings are basically right. the same. The castings are the same. Yep. Yeah, they all they all come from one place. Yeah. So, but so, but this apparently this guy, um, for the first hour he's a hundred bucks. Hmm. That's not bad. Yeah, and if you buy done. more hours, like if you if you were to buy a whole day, he might give you a deal. So. Hmm. Yeah. And apparently he drives around in like a little, you know, because he doesn't. Take any of these things with him. Yeah. <laughs> Just a, a tool set and yeah. Yeah. Is the guy? Yeah, when I had my cabinet shop, I absolutely would have been tempted to pay that guy money to come and do a lot because I hated that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hate setting up machines. I thought about doing that as well. Actually, is that there is actually a local guy who does that? Uh, yeah. I, what I did is there's a place in in my town um, where you can buy these machines, 
and you can take if you, if you can load your tool up on a truck and take it there, they'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, yeah, really, I'm gonna just pick up my planer and throw it in the back of my truck. And then when you unload it, easy it's six hundred. I'll load it. I'll knock it all out. Of, I'll, I'll yeah. Screw it up. Yeah. So, so this guy goes around, but I forgot about him. I had hired him once when my um, table saw height wouldn't adjust, and um, he called me and he said, "Take the whole thing apart as far as you can, then I'll come over and start billing you for my time. Mm -hmm. I'll do as much as I can, and then as soon as we see um, a successful resolution in sight." I'll tell you exactly what to do, and I'll leave so that you don't have to pay as much. And it worked yes. out well. It worked out well. So was it just the cotter pin on the wheel? <laughs> it was. I wasn't. I wasn't <laughs> strong enough to turn it. No. It was, uh, you know how it um, it rides, you know, like this, mm -hmm. and it pivots on a gigantic uh, polished cylinder. Mm -hmm. uh, that cylinder had just a just a fine, fine film of um, rust on it. I mean, you couldn't even oh, see wow. it. You couldn't even see yeah. it. I had to pound that pin out. Yeah. Um, so I had a piece of rebar that I held with a leather glove, and I had a basically a short-handled sledgehammer, and I had to pound that pin out, clean yeah. up the pin. And actually, the, the rust might have been on the inside of the casting, not on the big huge pin itself and um, and then I made a, I made a dowel that would fit into a hand drill that I wrapped with like 240 grit or 320 grit sandpaper so I could polish the inside of that yeah. and now it works now it works like a champ and I just keep that thing lubricated but so the lesson learned is if you're not going to be in your shop for a while go out and lease Run your uh, table saw up and down a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spray something in there. Yeah, run it up great. and down both ways, and then walk away. Yeah. Yep. So. Bow shield. Yeah, yeah. That was not yeah. a fun. That was like a full day project with a sore back. So. Yeah. 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 No thanks. But it wasn't as tough. Like people, the the reason I would hire the guy is because he would be able to do it quicker and better than me. But it wasn't really that tough. So. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, if you've got tools out there that you haven't been maintaining, just get all your manuals together, make a list of all the stuff you'd need to go do a um, shop maintenance day, and go do it to your tools. Yeah. So. Figure at least yeah. an hour for the planer, at least an hour for the joiner. Yeah, the longest part of doing more. planer maintenance, yeah. the longest part of the planer maintenance was going to the hardware store and getting all the crap I needed. Hmm. So. <laughs> Well, it's just tedious. It is, and it's not what I want to be doing. No. I want to be running stuff through the planer, not fixing the planer, but mm -hmm. whatever. I was thinking a minute about having a, a, a wood chat session on tuning up tools or equipment, and I think we could do it, but just don't, don't, don't do it on a joint or a planer. Do it on yeah. something more simple. Um, I don't know. Squaring up a, a table saw fence, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Set up the table saw up a fence. Bandsaw. Yeah, but basic t tuning stuff. Yeah, that, that's. I would love the tuning up a bandsaw and doing all the stuff around drift and tension and all that stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, putting, there we go. Putting that upgraded blade on my bandsaw made it cut ridiculously better. Ridiculously. Better. Yeah, the blade is like ninety percent of how a bandsaw performs. Yeah. yeah. Put a nice fence on it. Put uh, get the wheels balanced and true. Get the fancy springs and everything in there. But if you have a crap blade, it still sucks. Yep. Yeah. And if your blade's not centered on the wheel. No. Um, I, I can get away with can. it on my Rikon, but on my nicer uh, Laguna, I can tell the difference of when the blade is off off the of center immediately hmm. when I start to cut. I'll like oh, it's, it's oh. off, and I'll open it up, and sure enough. Hmm. I guess we talk about this well. a bit later bit later when we do the show, but I actually run it with the teeth off the edge of the wheel, so it's forward of center. Really? Now I guess as long as you've got as long as you've got the wheels aligned correctly to compensate for that, then it should be fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Matt Nate, you can add that to your to your idealist as well, tuning up a bandsaw. Yeah. 
Um, Which oh, brings up another person we should try and get on here is Michael Fortune. Yeah, I was right. I just yeah, right. I, I thought of that and thought, no, so do we have that kind of power? Hey, we can try. Yeah. Um, it might be interesting to do a show on uh, sliding table saws. They're becoming yeah. more and more accessible. Um, I've got one if you don't know. Um, I've been using it for, I don't know, over a year, maybe two years. And. It's what is this there. table saw that you speak of? I don't, I don't know this tool. Mm -hmm. It's got like a this round, <laughs> circular, metal thing with like little angular, sharp things sticking out of it. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to comment. Um, you're talking about tuning up tools. Um, if you buy a Felder machine, when you go in and get a quote for it, they break it down piece by piece by piece. So, when I was looking at buying a Felder table saw, they were quoting me for the the saw. They were charging me, they were quoting me for the anodization on the sign table. They were quoting me for the motor, and they were quoting me for the UL certification. And also built into that is a Felder tech to come and install and set up the machine for you. So he no. comes to your shop and gets it all set up so it's operating just perfectly. And that's how a lot of those guys get such a good reputation and make money. Yeah. Is yeah. They will, you can buy these, like if you're a big shop, you buy these contracts where the guy stops by once a week, once a month, once a quarter, mm -hmm. through all your stuff. Yes, yeah. And you actually have to have that Felder guy come and look at it, otherwise it voids the warranty, I believe. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like having a Chevy guy change your oil on a Ford. Yeah. So we've got lots of good ideas here. Um, Mike suggested a a discussion on blades. I think he means saw blades, but it could be blades, plain blades as well, or yeah. Yeah, I, was, I, I just, I just reply like uh, across yeah. uh, across all different tools. So, mm -hmm. saw um, blades, hand planes. Hopefully, yeah. between the three of us here, we've got some variety. We're not all set up with she she looks cutter heads, for example, or so, so we have a bit Actually, of hey, variety. Um, speaking of, I recently picked up the uh, Dewalt. Uh, what is it, 730 or... 735? Or, yeah, 735. Uh, planer, yeah. You know, so I needed to have something just to to uh, make some steps a little speedier because I keep getting orders and a lot of time to fulfill them. Dang orders. Um, yeah, I know, they get in the way of all the fun work. <laughs> but, um, yeah, those knives that come in are crap. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> the DeWalt yeah. yeah. box planer? Yeah. 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 If uh, if WIA goes well, I'll be upgrading to the to the Shelix head for that thing. Mm -hmm. so. I I gotta tell you, I had I had a Grizzly joiner that took blades uh, for a long time, and I bought upgraded blades so that I had two sets of blades, so that I could always have one out for sharpening while one yeah. was in the planer. Yeah. Yeah. The joiner. Yeah. And then I looked at the book. And how you know doing the blades and how you put them in, and then that's when I said I think I'm just gonna buy a new joiner. <laughs> and, uh, wow! A guy drove up from Oregon and he bought my joiner and um, mm. and I get you know I, I sold him the spare blades. He had one of those uh, cargo racks that you put into your bumper hitch. Uh huh. You put the joiner on there and bungee cord wow. it to the back, drove all the way back to Oregon. <laughs> Holy smokes! And now I've got, All right. Yeah, and now I've got uh, the carbide inserts on my joiner and planer. Yeah. And I ain't never, I ain't never changing changing blades again. I used yeah. to have a Dewalt lunchbox planer that had the blades that were crappy because they're gonna, they want to make, they want to sell you blades. They want to make. Yeah. 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 And uh, man, I'm never, I'm, I'm never, I'm trying to get a Shelix cutter head for my table saw now, but. Uh, <laughs> Or, I'm assuming on that Dewalt planer that that uh, because of the way the blades go in, you can't resharpen them, right? Um, yeah, you you can hone them, but you can't sharpen them. Yeah, you, you have a very very small tolerance for a metal removal. Yeah, you yeah. can't re screw that. Grind them because they're indexed, right? They are double edged, yeah. though. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. Have to flip them around. But if you make them, if you make them too, sh they're indexed off the center. Yeah. So if you make them too short, they won't they won't reach. Yeah. Right. And and if you did do that, you would have to do them all exactly the same, 
<laughs> so yeah, I would just say step up to. Yeah, it's actually, it's gonna happen. Here's my recommendation: well, sell it. And just that's all. I don't need a huge. One. That's all I need. I just need something small. So. Yeah. The um, 15 inch man is so beautiful, though. I don't have room for that big of a plane. I can take this one off of the bench and put it underneath the table, and I'm good to go. So. Yeah. Yeah. The Infinity carbide knives are pretty good for the Dewalt planer too. That's that's true, actually. And you can um, just use a diamond stone on those if yeah. you ever need to do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they are two hundred fifty dollars. I was gonna say I'd rather spend two hundred fifty yeah. on the Shelix. So. Yeah, you, you get four cut four edges on there and. Yeah. There are some downsides too, and we can talk a bit more about a bit more about that as we yeah, I'll, I'll pick get to that on. show. So, Matt, I guess you'll get some polls up onto your website where yeah. people can go and make suggestions and vote for what they want to see. Um, yep. We're looking for lots of ideas. Um, Matt, where will that poll be hidden on your website? Um, I will tweet a link with the WeChat hashtag after I put it up. Okay. There you when go. he tweets that out, if you guys could uh, throughout the week just kind of retweet it, uh, those of you yeah. that are that are watching and interested, so and get some more uh, more interest in it. So, yeah, add it to your signature line on your email. <laughs> At work. <laughs> sure. There are a lot of woodworkers at Microsoft that I'm gonna I'm trying to get involved in this, but. Um, cool. They all would much rather can uh, be passive and consume content than get into a conversation. For okay. Something. So I've been trying to get them to organize a show, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So, all right, folks, is it time to wrap it up? I think we can. I think we've covered yeah, everything over. here. So. Cool. Well, folks, that was Wood Chat for October 9th, twenty thirteen. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff. Biggest thing is we need your help in getting us a list of topics and techniques you want to cover, um, woodworkers that you'd like to see on the show or other things. We'll put up a poll. Um, Scott's going to be gone next week at WIA, right? I'll be gone. And I'll be gone the next Wednesday, uh, which is, I believe, the 23rd. But Chris will be here holding down the fort, so to speak. I will be. And, Joseph, we are going to get you signed up for the telephone design game, so be ready. And we also want you doing a turning demo for us. Yeah, we want to see that turning demo. So um, so if you enjoyed the show, that's great. Um, remember to give us topics so that we can do more great shows in the future. We do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you miss the show, you can always watch it on YouTube. And um, uh, But remember, even though the, the show is ending for tonight, uh, Woodchat's always open over on Twitter with hashtag Woodchat. If you have a question or a design you want to share or a project you just completed that you want to show off, just tweet a link to it with the hashtag Woodchat, and uh, all the friendly Woodchat woodworkers will uh, give you the feedback you, you need or answer your questions or whatever. So that's it for us tonight. I'm Matt Gradwell from Uppercut Woodworks signing off. Chris, Chris Wong here from Flare Woodworks. And I just want to reinforce that Woodchat is driven by you, not by us. So we really do want your feedback to yes, yes. dictate what we cover in future shows. Scott? I'm, I'm Scott. Scott Make Woodworks. And uh, I'll see you guys either at uh, Woodwork in America or I'll see you in two weeks. Cool. All right, everybody. That's it. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.